All right, so in this video, we're gonna be diving into the code and building out a simple Shopify app. In my last video, we went through the setup of how to actually create an app. So if you don't already have an app created, I would go check that video out first. I'll put the links in the description. So go check that out and then come back to this video. But the SparkNotes version of it is that you should be signed up for the Shopify partner program, and you can do that at shopify.com partners. You should create a development store. You should download the Shopify CLI, and then you should follow the steps in the quick start guide to to get your app created. Once you've got your app created, then we're ready to start actually writing code, which is what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to split the build of this app into two or three different videos, and today we're gonna to be focusing on just the UI portion of it. So we're gonna be taking a closer look at Polaris. I'm gonna walk you through how it works and show you how to use it so that you can quickly build Shopify apps. Polaris is the design system that Shopify uses to guarantee a sort of universal style throughout the entire application. If you notice when you go through the Shopify dashboard or you open up a store, go to the orders page or products or whatever page it is that you're on, you can see that it has the same kind of styling throughout. There's these cards, um, the same similar layouts and button styles and text fields. All of these design choices follow the Polaris style guide, which pretty much ensures this uniformity throughout the entire app. You don't have to use Polaris to build your app, but if you are building an embedded app, then I would highly recommend it. There are basically two ways that a user can access your app. From the app page, when they click on your link, the user is either brought to a standalone web page when they click on the app in their dashboard. The other way a user can access your app is through what we call embedded apps, which is what we are gonna be building out today. And that just means that when they click on the app from their admin dashboard, it basically opens it up in an iframe within the dashboard. So your app is still hosted externally, but Shopify reaches out, grabs that app, and then displays it right there for us. There's a couple of reasons why you would want to build an embedded app. The first one is just that it's really easy to access right from their dashboard, whether they're on desktop or mobile. It kind of creates a better user experience as well. And if you're doing an embedded app, then it is a good idea to use Shopify Polaris just because you're already in the admin dashboard. So when they open up the app and see that there's a similar styles and similar design, it's gonna flow a lot better with the rest of the platform. I think having those same styles and look and feel everywhere throughout the platform, including on your app, helps build user trust as well. Another reason why you would want to use Polaris is that it just speeds up the development process so much. Unless you have a specific UI that you have to implement for your app, Polaris is a really great way to go because of their pre-built components. And the UI you build out with Polaris is already optimized for desktop and mobile clients. So those are just a few reasons why if you're building an embedded app, I would highly recommend using Polaris. So like I said, today we're gonna to be focusing on building out the entire UI of this simple Shopify app. The app we're gonna build today is a product tags app. It's Probably not really useful for anything, but it's a great starter application just to see an example. It's basically gonna have a simple card list view with a card for each product in your store. Below the product name, it will display the existing tags. And then at the bottom of the card, it'll have an input field and a button so that you can add additional tags. Right now, these products are hard-coded in uh, because we haven't set up GraphQL or anything yet. We are just gonna be focusing on Polaris and building out and mocking the entire UI using that. One more thing before we get started. Um, before going through this video, you should be at least somewhat familiar with React, um, or at the very least have a, a pretty good understanding of JavaScript. But if you are somebody who is barely getting into development and you want to get started with Shopify app development, I am planning on making a series going through how you can get started from absolute zero. So let me know if that is something you want to see and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss it. All right, so I think we're ready to get started. Let's pick up right where we left off in the last video. We have our app and development store created. We have the development server running uh, after executing Shopify node serve in the terminal. And we have the project pulled up in our code editor. We're first gonna take a look at the documentation for Polaris and I'll walk you through how you can use the docs to answer almost any question that comes up about the layout and design. We'll be referring to the components tab for the whole video. This is where it outlines the usage and functionality for each of the React components, as well as gives us examples for any specific use case that you might have. On the left-hand side, we have the main navigation tabs where it groups components by their function. For example, we have an actions tab for components that are action-based, such as buttons and toggles. We also have a structure tab that details components that contribute to the layout and structure of your UI, such as pages and cards. So if you're looking for a specific component, you can find it by going to the tab that describes its function, or you can use the search bar up above if you know exactly which one you need. Let's take a closer look at the card component since we'll be using it in the app we're building today. The first thing you'll notice here, other than the title and component description, 
is the examples dropdown. Most of the Polaris components have multiple props and ways you can structure them. So the examples here list out pretty much every way that you can use a component to create whatever design and functionality you're going for. Here we have the default card and the code that is used just below it. Um, they have an example of a card with footer actions. Um, and the example we're actually going to be using today is the card with multiple sections. You can see down below that it's giving you the exact code used in each of these examples. Something I've noticed is that you sometimes see these child components such as section and subsection. And I haven't found anywhere in the docs where these are detailed and where it actually explains how to use them. So that's why you really do need to get familiar with the components you want to use and look through all of the examples as well as the code to see what's really going on. All of the props for the components are also listed below the code. So this is a really good reference to see what options you have with each component. The docs for the other components are laid out in the exact same way. So you should be able to find what you need by going through the examples and checking out the props. Now that we know a little bit more about Polaris and how to use the documentation, Let's start adding some components into our code and build out the UI. So here we have our project pulled up in VS Code. This is a Next.js project, so there are quite a few files here that we aren't concerned with at all. Um, you have the server files where the Shopify CLI already sets up everything for us in terms of authentication and API requests. Um, but we're going to be working in the Pages folder in the index.js file. This is the main entry point for the entire UI of your app. There isn't much in this file now, but let's just remove the existing code so we can start fresh. Let's just leave an empty component in here that uh, returns a div for now. The first component we want to bring in over from the Polaris library is the page component. Uh, you can check out each of the components we use in the documentation for more details, but the page component is essentially a wrapper for our code that provides some additional functionality and options like a title and a footer section. Let's import the page component into our app. So we'll just do that like so, import page from, and it's at Shopify slash Polaris. Oops, at Shopify slash Polaris. Okay, so now we have the page component imported and we can now use it. So let's add in uh, a page component. We'll leave it empty for now. And let's just add in a title prop uh, and we'll just call it product tags since that's the name of our app. So once we save this, we can automatically see the page update in our store. So this is what the page component looks like and the title prop is shown right here. The next component we're going to add is the layout component, which is right here. And this component does exactly what the name implies. It allows us to create the main layout for a page that is automatically responsive for all screen sizes. So we will import that from Polaris and add it into our page component. So we'll bring in layout and let's just add that in to our page component. And then within the layout component, we'll also add a child component called layout dot section. So you can see that's kind of how it's set up um, here in the documentation and the code examples. So let's add in another child component called layout dot section. Okay. And then let's just add a P tag in there. Um, it just says hello for now. Okay. So there we see our code that is inside the layout section. So next, let's add in the card component. So make sure that you import all the components you use before adding them in the code. Um, I always forget to do it and you will get errors if you do not. So uh, yeah, just remember to always import them before adding them into your code. So here, let's create a card with a title prop. So just like the page component, the card also has a title prop. Um, so let's, let's just put product name uh, in for the title prop. And then inside of the com card component, let's add in a P tag with uh, some sample text in there for now. And we'll see what that looks like here. Okay, you can see that the content inside the card doesn't really look aligned at all. Um, so we'll want to add a, another prop to it that's called sectioned. So just add the sectioned prop to it. And that basically just properly aligns and spaces the content inside of the card for us. So you can see the difference that that made. Right now we just have a one column layout set up 
Um, but if we wanted to, we could also do a two column layout, uh, which is what we'll want. This is on a, the screen is a little smaller, so it um, automatically resizes and stacks them. Um, but the way that you would get two columns, if you wanted to get two columns, is you can have two layout uh, section and then just have the one half uh, prop on each of those. So um, if I duplicated this layout.section and then added the one half prop to both of them, then we would see that reflect here and we'd see two cards side by side. So now that we have the basic card implemented, let's actually take a look at the examples in the documentation to find the card layout that we want for our app. We'll need a card that has an upper and a lower section. So let's click the example that has a card with multiple sections. So we can actually just copy this code that is here below and replace our card uh, that we wrote. And we can just change the title out to product name, which is what we had in there before. So you can see the sample card that they gave us uh, that looks like this has two sections. And in the code, it basically just has two card dot section child components within it. So the structure is basically set up for what we want already. So in the top section here, we want to list out the existing product tags. Um, let's search in the doc for the tag component. So let's look, okay, and it looks like that's the first one. Um, so under the example dropdown, let's select the removable tag and take a look at the code here. So they added some state and handler code in here that we don't really need to copy over. Um, so let's just grab the component itself and paste it right in our code, uh, right in the first card dot section. Um, and then we'll just remove the key and the other variables here. So in the on remove, so you actually need the on remove in there to have the little um, X appear. So let's just add in uh, just a console log uh, statement for now. Um, and then inside the tag, let's just say test. And we'll save that. And then let's go ahead and check out our app and see what that looks like. And you know what? Yep. Okay, so I did not import it. So uh, once again, make sure that you import the components that you use before you use them. Otherwise, you're going to see errors like that. And it's actually not showing the X because I just put a console log um, instead of an actual function in there. So this is evoked immediately, uh, which is not what we want. So if we just turn that into an arrow function, then it should work just fine. Yep. Um, cool. So there's that. We can click on it. Nothing happens right now. Well, it's, it's actually just logging out to the console. You can see it logged out hello uh, whenever we click that. So let's go ahead and duplicate this tag. So we have two of them. We can see what it looks like when there are two side by side. Okay, so um, I mean, you can see here we have an issue with the spacing. They're way too close together. So this is where another structure component called the stack will come in handy. So let's find that. It's under the structure uh, tab. And then here it is. So stacks are used for horizontal or vertical layouts where you want to control the spacing and positioning within a row or a column. So the default stack is pretty straightforward. It's just a stack component. And then anything that you want to be inside of the row or column within it, you just put inside as uh, child components. So let's go ahead and wrap uh, the tags that we created inside of, I don't know why I wrote script, but let's wrap it inside of a stack component. So we'll cut and paste both of these tag components and paste them right in here. Okay, and so now we can see what that looks like and I have to import it once again. Cool, okay, so that fixed the spacing issue just by adding in the stack. Uh, it spaced it nicely and really did enough for us where we don't need to add any more customization here. So now let's move on to the bottom portion of our card. Um, in the bottom, we are supposed to have a text field over here on the left-hand side and a button on the right-hand side, uh, which we can find both of these by searching in the documentation. So let's just copy over each of the default example code for each of these components and just place them together in the card dot section um, just to see what that looks like. So let's search for a text field. Here's a text field component, uh, which that's exactly what we want. Um, so once again, they have some state added in here that 
Uh, we don't really need to copy over just to get the UI in. So let's just copy. I'm just copying only the component here. Um, so in the second card dot section here, let's remove that P tag, add in a text field. Um, let's just remove the value prop and let's remove the on change as well. Um, so we'll just have a label. Actually, let's just remove the label as well. Okay, so it's just an empty text field. And we'll see what that looks like after I import it. Jeez, we've got a, you know, I'm going to import the button right now um, since I'll probably forget to do it later. Okay, so there's our text field, um, which is, it looks exactly like what we want. There's no label um, and it's just a, a very default basic looking text field. Now let's go in the docs and find the button component. Button component, um, and it's just the basic button, uh, which we actually don't want the basic button. That's what that looks like. We want the button that is called primary button. Um, and the only difference between primary button and the base button or the default button is that uh, this one has the primary prop added onto it. So let's copy that over and we'll add it in just right after or right under our text field in the second card dot section here. We'll see. Okay. So that added that in there. Um, let's just change the text before we forget. So it's going to say something like add tag. There we go. So we obviously don't want these to be stacked like this. We want them to be side by side uh, with the text field on the left and the button on the right. So this is where the stack component will come in handy again. So let's wrap both of these components uh, in a stack component and then just see how far that gets us uh, before we need to make more changes. We'll add that in there uh, and see what that looks like. Cool, okay, so yeah, it actually brought it up. It looks really close to how we want it uh, to end up. Um, they're on one line now, but we do still need to work with the spacing a little bit. Um, you can see they're side by side, whereas we want the text field on the left side and the button all the way on the right. Um, so basically they're just both at opposite ends. So to do this, the stack component actually has a property that is called distribution. So let's go to the stack component in the docs and scroll down to distribution here. So um, the distribution property, it just affects how the elements inside are spaced across the row or column. Uh, very similar to how justify content and align items works in Flexbox. So the distribution value we want is uh, equal spacing, I believe. So let's add that in here uh, in the stack. So distribution and we'll set that to equal spacing. So uh, let's check out what that looks like. Cool, okay, so that gave us the look we're going for with all of the available white space going between the elements in a stack. So let's just copy over this card component to the other layout uh, just so we can see what it looks like when there are two side by side. So we'll copy that and replace the second card here. So now we have our UI set up. Um, obviously it's not fully functional yet. Uh, we still need to bring in the data and add the functionality um, to you know, the text box and the buttons and the removing and everything. Um, but in the next video, we're gonna be bringing in the GraphQL API and getting the live data from our test store. Um, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications so you keep up uh, just with every time I upload. And if this video helped you out at all in any way, please leave a like, um, it really helps out. And leave a comment down below as well if you have any questions um, or there's something that wasn't very clear that you want me to go over in more detail in the next video. So that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one where we're gonna build out the app and make it fully functional using the GraphQL API. See ya.